A new four month long randomized controlled trial demonstrates that a very low carb diet lowers blood pressure better than the traditionally recommended DASH diet. I'm Dr. Brett Scher and welcome to Metabolic Mind. And you may think, well, wait a second, Metabolic Mind talks about metabolic health and mental health and ketogenic therapies and metabolic therapies as treatments for mental illness. So why are we talking about a blood pressure study? And that's a good question, but stick with me here. We're talking about a blood pressure study because it really highlights sort of this, this bias or the stigma against a ketogenic diet, or as we like to think about it as therapeutic nutritional ketosis. So when we're talking about using therapeutic nutritional ketosis as a medical intervention to treat mental illness or to treat neurocognitive decline or to treat a uh, metabolic condition like type 2 diabetes, there's this hurdle we need to overcome within the medical community that's sort of, you could say, biased against a keto diet because we see reports on the US News and World Reports how it's the worst diet for health. We would probably hear how it's a terrible diet for high blood pressure too, but yet this DASH diet is commonly recommended and thought to be sort of the quote unquote best or the go-to diet for high blood pressure. But now we have a randomized controlled trial showing the exact opposite, that a very low carbohydrate diet or a ketogenic diet outperforms the traditional DASH diet for lowering blood pressure and improves other things as well, like reduction in medication use and reduction in blood sugar and hemoglobin A1C, which I'll get into. So it's important to bring this up though, to see, to sort of highlight this bias, because I'm really curious to see what the reaction is. Will a very low carb diet now become the go-to recommended diet for lowering blood pressure? I highly, highly doubt it because of this bias and these hurdles that we have, have to overcome within the medical community. So let's talk about the study real quickly without getting into too much of the details, but hit the highlights and then show how this really impacts how we think about a low carb diet versus other diets within the whole you know, nutritional milieu of how we recommend people eat. So the study was done by Dr. Laura Saslow and, and some of her colleagues at Michigan. It was published in the Annals of Family Medicine and it's called Comparing Very Low Carbohydrate Versus DASH Diets for Overweight or Obese Adults with Hypertension and Prediabetes or Type 2 Diabetes, a randomized trial. So right away, we learn a lot from the title. It's a long title, but we learn a lot from it. Um, you had to be overweight or obese to um, be enrolled and you had to have hypertension um, and prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, okay? So abnormal blood sugar, abnormal blood pressure, and having overweight or obesity. And it was randomized, which is really important, right? It wasn't observational, it was randomized, and it was four months long. When we look back to the original DASH trial in, in 1997, when the DASH trial got all its recognition, it was like a three-week trial. But here we have a four-month trial. So there's also another arm um, about higher intensity versus sort of lower intensity um, support, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. That's a little bit less important, but here are the highlights, right? Let's jump to the highlights. After four months of a very low carb diet, 25 to, or 20 to 35 grams of carbohydrates, net carbohydrates, versus the DASH diet focuses on limiting sodium to 2,300 milligrams per day and fat intake 20 to 30% of calories per day, with recommending to eat a variety of fruits and vegetables, lean meats and fish, whole grains, and low fat dairy. So what they find? After three months, the people in the very low carbohydrate group reduced their systolic blood pressure by 10 millimeters of mercury, and in the DASH group, five millimeters of mercury. So sure, the DASH diet helped people lower their blood pressure, but the very low carbohydrate group lowered it by twice as much, okay? And remember, these patients all had, or these subjects all had prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. So um, from a blood sugar perspective, the very low carbohydrate group also lowered their hemoglobin A1C by more than twice as much, by 0.35 percentage points versus 0.14 percentage points. And they lost more weight, again, almost twice as much, 19 pounds versus 10 pounds. But here's the other point. Not only did the very low carbohydrate group lower blood pressure more, but they also reduced their blood pressure medicines more. 31% were able to reduce versus only 13% in the DASH group. And the same thing for the hemoglobin A1C. Not only did the very low carbohydrate group lower the A1C more, but they also lowered their medications more. 40% in the very low carbohydrate group versus none in the DASH group. So this makes it even like more impressive, right? If they would have stayed on the same amount of medication, they probably would have lowered their blood sugar and their blood pressure even more. But because they were lowering their blood pressure and their blood sugar so much, they kind of had to come off their medications and they did a better job of doing that. Less medications, less side effects, less money, right? And and better outcomes with lower blood pressure and lower blood sugar. So really impressive results. 
Now, the second part of the study, there was sort of like a, you could say a higher intensity intervention, both again in the DASH and the very low carb group. For the very low carb group, didn't make much of a difference, but for the DASH group did make a little bit of a difference, which just shows, I don't know, my interpretation is that diet needs more support, whereas the very low carbohydrate does, diet doesn't need more support. But for me, that was sort of a secondary analysis. The main keys were better blood pressure lowering with fewer medications, better blood sugar lowering with fewer medications. So based on this study, the, a very low carbohydrate diet should absolutely replace the DASH diet as the number one recommended diet for blood pressure control. Cause this was a randomized control trial over four months showing impressive results. Is that going to happen? I don't think so. And that's what sort of plays into this, this bias, this stigma that we encounter when we're trying to open the discussion about using therapeutic nutritional ketosis as a therapy for mental illness. But studies like this need to help open the eyes of physicians to say, wait a second, it's not going to raise your blood pressure. It's not going to harm you. It's actually likely going to help you more so than the traditional diet that we're recommending. So does this mean everybody should be on a very low carb diet, ketogenic diet? No, no it's not for everybody, right? Whenever you talk about diet, you have to think about the diet that's going to work for each individual. But does, should everybody be on a DASH diet, a low sodium, low fat diet? Absolutely not as well, right? And even probably more emphatically no, because it's, it's inferior to the very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet for outcome measures of blood pressure and blood sugar. So uh, hats off to Dr. Saslow and our colleagues for doing a study like this, for going against the conventional wisdom, um, for for starting a protocol that that many people would say, why are you even doing that? We know the DASH diet's the diet for high blood pressure, right? But no, we don't know. And that's why we have to test these things. So hopefully this will, like I say, help open, open people's eyes that we do need to be more inclusive of a very low carbohydrate diet for many interventions, whether it's blood pressure, blood sugar, or as a therapeutic intervention to treat mental illness, neurocognitive decline, type two diabetes, and other medical conditions. All right, so thanks for being with us here at Metabolic Mind. I'm Dr. Brett Schur, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks a lot, have a great day.